Today is one of those mornings where when you look towards the sun as it's coming up, it's about 9 o'clock this morning, the clouds have light coming through them and they show the shadow side. As we turn and we move towards the west, first of all we see a storm coming in so the clouds are backed up. But in addition to that, we no longer have the light coming through the clouds and the clouds are showing just shadow. So they're a mauve gray against that brilliant blue sky. So today's painting, I'm gonna to try to capture that look with that small farm scene, which by the way is the farm where you turn to go down the road to my home. So what I thought I'd show everyone this morning is how I go about creating a watercolor. And I've drawn out a simple scene and there'll be an accompanying video that shows the scene and I described the light and what I'm looking for. This will be a typical watercolor sky, two-thirds sky, one-third land, strip of land with a simple farm scene. And as I work I'll try to talk a little bit about the process. But primarily, I just wanted to share with you how it is I paint. Since over the last months and years, we've looked at a lot of paintings that I've completed, I thought it might be fun this morning to see how I work. And perhaps in later video, we can talk about the materials I use and why I use them. But for now, I'm just going to wet the sky area not terribly careful about that because the area below the sky at the horizon line, much of that's going to be darker than the sky. So those darker washes will go right over anything that might happen to drip down and across. The only area I might want to be a little bit concerned about is the roof lines and the, and the road, the small bit of road that will be in the, in the scene. But primarily what I had this, this morning when I saw this scene was a, a fairly intense blue up in the sky. And this is towards the west. And the sun is rising in the east. And it was capturing a, a, a fairly uh, dynamic blue scene with mauve clouds in, off in the distance. And those mauve clouds rolled back all the way back down towards the horizon. So I've indicated the blue sky. And you have to remember, watercolor is always going to dry considerably lighter than what it appears. That's something you always want to take into account when you're out there painting. So the mauve sky clouds, I'm going to drop in wet into wet. And I purposely left some white areas. And I'm going to connect these clouds to the edge of the painting. And I think that's important because it shows that something is happening outside of the, the picture frame. That this world exists beyond the boundaries of the frame. And, it, and that there is something going on beyond our, our visual perception of this painting. So I do want to follow simple rules of perspective and make sure that these clouds have the appearance that they go back into the distance. Now the mauve clouds are indicated. And I'm going to go reinforce the blue of the sky towards the zenith of the sky, we know that it, it is a more pure hue blue and that that intensity or chroma of that color goes away towards the horizon. My technique of wet into wet is something that I've borrowed from many different watercolors, but Edward Sego, the great British watercolorist, is perhaps one of my favorites. And he was famous for not only working wet into wet, but also 
dry brush clouds. So that's going to be it for the actual sky. And I'm going to allow these small bits of white to exist on the paper. And they, don't, they don't bother me at all. I'm going to increase the intensity of a few of the clouds, the shadow of the clouds in a few places near the horizon. But for the most part, I'm going to let the rest of it exist as is. Now, I want the, the focal area to be the sky. So the, the land, the strip of land, the one-third strip of land is going to be kept very simple. It is summertime here in eastern Colorado. So I'm going to work with some ochre, some ultramarine blue, and just a touch of Windsor yellow. And I'm going to bring that strip of land up to the road. I'm going to allow some sparkle to stay on the paper. I'm not going to take away all of the sparkle because I think that that adds something to a watercolor. The road itself, the gravel that they use on the road is a pinkish orange color. And, and sometimes it can be difficult to match the actual hue, uh, but if you get the if you get the value correct, I think it will read. You want to make sure that that value is lighter in the distance, and that it gets darker as it comes towards you. Again, that's a perspective matter uh, that I think makes a difference in in the work. Now with those elements in place, the sky is dangerously wet. It's up against a, a still wet foreground. Um, because of the brush control, I was able to keep those two things from bleeding together. But I don't want to rush the process of drawing, especially in the sky, because the colors I'm using are giving me a slight granulation. And I like that granulation in the sky, especially in this instance. So for now, I'm going to have to leave this to dry on its own. And once it's dry, I can simply indicate the buildings. And, and perhaps I will dry brush in a little bit more in the foreground. But for the most part, uh, this, this piece is considered complete uh, up to this point. And once those washes are dry, it's just a matter of a little bit of calligraphy and, and, and simple detail. And then the piece, of course, is complete. So... I look forward to talking to you next time we work. Perhaps next time it will be in the field. And as always, I hope you go to jrmonks.com or follow me on Facebook or find me on Instagram. And until next time, thank you for taking the journey with me. So here is the finished piece. As you can see, there is considerable granulation happening in the sky. and the different layers of clouds and the road leading in in dry brush so from the last time we saw this all of the washes have dried and I came back in and dry brushed the foreground, the buildings, the road and added the darker clouds to give a greater sense of depth again I want to thank everybody for joining me and until next time thank you for taking the journey along